This week, we're looking at one of the most profound sayings of Jesus on the cross. And it's actually recorded in two of the Gospels, which is noticeable. And one of the Gospels is the Gospel of Mark, which considering Mark has the least amount of Jesus' teachings and sayings within it, and it centres on the actions of Jesus, I think is really important. In chapter 15, it says this. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words are so provocative. First of all, there's a tension which Tim spoke about so beautifully on Sunday. How could God, who is Trinity, Jesus, who says, I and the Father are one. How could Jesus in any way be forsaken and abandoned? And yet at the same time, how could anyone go through the pain of the cross, the brutality and, and the horrific nature of what he was going through and not feel that level of hopelessness and despair? It mirrors Jesus' experience in Gethsemane, praying, Father, if you will, would you take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. There's this wrestling within the Trinity itself as it walks through its darkest hour. There are often two ways of understanding this passage. And I think there's a bit of truth in both. Firstly, there has been some teaching that has said, yeah, Jesus did in some way feel the fullness of abandonment in this moment. Paul in Corinthians says, um, he who knew no sin was made to be sin in order that we might become the righteousness of God. And when Paul says that, some people have been inspired to think about how God must have looked on Jesus at that point, how he must have seen all of the sin and shame and brokenness poured out on his son, and he just in some way couldn't bear it. But we mustn't, in understanding that pain of the father, think that somehow there is this angry God and this loving Jesus who at this point are in conflict and we're in the middle. That's not good theology. On the other side, there are people who point to passages like in Hebrews, where it says that Jesus was made perfect through his suffering, Hebrews chapter 2. And then it has this incredibly profound passage. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he make ato might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And some people who emphasise this say, well, Jesus had to have felt abandonment and forsakenness because that is part of the human condition. And if he didn't feel those things, well, how can he fully identify with us and be that, that high priest? Again, there are challenges if we push that too far. Because we make out, again, like Jesus and the Father are somehow distanced and separate when actually their wills are aligning at this point. I think something that Tim said helped me understand this passage in a way I never have before. He said that actually the pain and the loss that Jesus was going through at this moment mirrors the pain and the loss that the father sees at this moment as he watches his son die. That actually the pain that Jesus expresses here, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is the same pain expressed as God, the father turns out the lights in the sky and tears the temple curtain in two. I find that such a rich image and understanding of this passage and helps me just engage with Jesus right in the tension of this moment. It teaches us so much about Jesus, it teaches us so much about the cross. 
but it also teaches us that whatever we go through in life, that Jesus is with us. Whatever we go through in life, we have a heavenly father who has been through the height and the depths of human experience and pain as he has watched his son be crucified and later be raised. I hope that in your discipleship groups, as you look at this passage together, it helps you wrestle a little deeper with who Jesus is and what the cross means to you.